We're blessed to be a blessing. A life to make a difference. There's hope for my brother, hope for my sister. Life more abundantly. He puts him in the Garden of Eden. Here's your responsibility. If you're not going to be responsible with the garden, you'll never be responsible with a girl. Give them relationship breeze on them. Puts them in the garden, residence. Gives them a responsibility, verse 15. But now, here's the next one D. Gives them resources. Can church say resources? Here it is, Genesis 2, 16. I'm, I'm just walking through the scriptures. Look what it said, verse 16. And the Lord God... Commanded whom? The man. Saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Form them from the dust, breeze, relationship. Eat a part of the garden, residence. Put some that, dress it and keep it, responsibilities. Now it says, man, listen, while you're in this garden, if you work it, when you dress it, and when you keep it, or rather, because you dress it, because you keep it, look at all these trees. See all these trees? You can eat freely because you've been responsible. Your responsibility is going to give you resources. So when you work it in verse 15, you can eat in verse 16. But if you don't work, in verse 15, y'all got the brakes on me this morning. I'm just trying. If you can't work in verse 15, then don't be tripping expecting to eat. In verse, here are your resources. In other words, here are your groceries. Now, Adam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a girl in a minute. But it's not going to be her job to bring the groceries. Boy, y'all got the brakes on me. Y'all got, got the brakes on me here. No. You need to have some groceries when she get there. Uh, yeah. She's going to be greedy and she's going to be hungry. So make sure that you got groceries when she arrives. Now, let me throw this in parenthetically. Now, when she comes and she brings some groceries with her, then praise the Lord. Because if you got groceries before she comes, and she come bringing groceries when she comes, that's groceries and groceries, that's groceries square. But it's not her job to provide groceries for you. And don't make the man feel bad if he don't own the whole grocery store. That's one thing I love about Andrea. Is that when she got with me, it wasn't because I had the grocery store, still ain't got it, and show didn't have no groceries. <laughs> Law didn't have no groceries. I'm talking about no groceries at all. And she had more groceries than I had. But I thank God that I wasn't a man who was tripping and egotistical and prideful. Let me help some of y'all brothers. Some of y'all, the reason why you won't get a good woman because you're intimidated by strong women who got their own groceries and you get problematic because you're so weak. And if you're not careful, you want a woman who underneath you that can make you feel powerful and so you can, if she beneath you and make less and got less education, you make you feel like you're the king of your castle. Because you got a needy woman who depends on you, no talent, and make you feel like you're the man. You keep calling yourself King Kong, but you ain't nothing but Curious George. Somebody help me, somebody help me this morning. Let me tell you, I thank God when I got married, when I started dating, she made a whole triple what I made. Triple! But I did the best I could with my little $100 a week. Come on, huh? take out and $5. To, you, can get, you can get three uh, uh, Chris, uh, crystals with the onions and the pickle on it and with the fries and the large Sprite at that time. Y'all ain't helping me here. And we just split one and a half. One and a half for you, one half for me. And we'll drink out of each other's straw. We will not even one drink. It's more romantic that way. That's 
how you do. We don't need two drinks. We'll just exchange slob. We'll just, just, just keep it together. It's too big. Come. But here's the problem. But the higher she climbed the ladder corporately, and I was the same the church boy, when she got a raise, I'm trying to help somebody. Cause I'm trying to help somebody. It didn't make me lose my mind and be so insecure. Not, not God. No, I would get her pom poms. And she come on for work. I'm cheering her up, cheering on. Cause guess what? We just got one. I'm saying that, not trying to say I'm all that, but try to give you an example. What you need, why do you want a weak woman? So, oh, y'all, y'all still, y'all still with me? I should have got this offering first, Pastor Stu. So, the relationship, residence, responsibility, resources, and then one E, he gives him restriction. Y'all give me the, the 10 minutes. Somebody say restriction. Here it is, verse, verse number, verse number 17. Okay, Adam, now. Your groceries, all these trees are your groceries. However, as one, I don't want you to eat it. If you eat of this one tree, it's called the knowledge of good and evil. Well, as a little boy, they say it was the apple tree. That's not what the Bible said. He said it's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, if you eat of this one, you're going to surely die. You got me? I'm going to walk through it. Adam, here are the characteristics I want you to have. Relationship. Residence, responsibility, resources. Here's your restriction. Here is what you can have. Here's what you can't have. Here is your yes. Here's your no. Here's what you can touch. Here's what you can't. Here is your right. Here's your wrong. Here is your morality. Here's your immorality. Here's your immortality. Here's your mortality. I'm going to draw a line and let you know what is right, what's wrong. And once you know the difference from right and wrong and the consequences of right and wrong, what you can, what you can't, what is provided, what is prohibited. Because once the girl come, you just can't touch everything. Once she gets here, some things you can have. Some things you can't have. You can't have the girl and everything else you want to. Because it'll kill you. And if it don't kill you, she might kill you. Somebody help me preach this thing like I feel it this morning. Now, Adam, you got your residence. You got your relationship. You got your resources. You got your responsibilities. You got your restrictions. Now, now you're ready. Y'all with me? Verse 18. I'm almost finished. I'm just going to walk through them. Just let me walk through them. Verse 18. And the Lord said, it is not good. God says, okay, you know what? I've been working on it since verse number seven. It took me 11 verses to get him ready. Now he's ready. Everything he needs for this black love that matters, he's got it now. He qualifies. He has all the prerequisites. And God said, it is, it is not good that the man should be alone. Now here's how we messed this scripture up. When I was a little boy, the preacher to preach, God said it ain't good that man should be alone. That's a lie. God never says it's not good that man should be alone. God says it's not good. Here's the definite article we call it in English. The definite article. It's not good that this one. Some of you grammarians, it's a definite article. Not good that man, generically. No. The definite article. It's not good that this one, that the man, that this one right here. The one that's got a relationship 
the one that's got a residence, the one that's responsible, the one that got some resources, the one that understands their restriction, it's not good that this one be alone. Some jokers need to be left alone. Y'all not gonna help me, y'all. Why y'all making me work so hard? My friends, that message is powerful. We have more messages for you. Don't you turn that channel. We'll be right back. You're watching Dr. E. Dewey Smith and Living Hope. See you in a minute. You gotta have it together yourself. Why? Because you ain't looking about to save you because what you need is a spouse, not a savior. Jesus is your savior. Come on, are there, are there any ladies who don't need a savior? Jesus qualified for that. Now you just need some companionship, somebody to be your life with. But if he don't come, you already saved. Jesus took care of that on Calvary. It would be nice to have. You ain't saving me, dog. No, I can take myself to dinner before you came. My God, this fingernail polish, you didn't pay for that. I can do what I need to do for myself. I want to join with you. I don't need, I don't need deliverance. Every time someone invests, every time someone's a partner with us, they help us to reach other boys and girls, to reclaim them uh, from child sex trafficking. Whenever someone invests in us, they help us to touch the young boy, the young girl uh, who has HIV. They help us to minister to the woman who's been battered, or the child who's been battered that has nowhere to go. So they help us to go out and make a difference in the world. Partnering with E. Dewey Smith Ministries connects you to a growing global outreach, touching the lives of the battered, imprisoned, sexually abused, and needy. But by partnering with us, you really become partakers and not just part of the responsibility, but also the blessing. So uh, we're just excited to have persons who want to make a difference for Christ. We're excited about people and transform the world. Impact the world with your partnership with EDS Ministries. Your monthly donation of $25 or more helps to impact the lives of thousands. Join Carpenters at Work. Become a partner with E. Dewey Smith Ministries today. Because of wonderful people like you, people around the world are hearing the Word of God. So God said they're not good that he will be alone. So guess what? I will make and help meet. God said, I'm going to send him, not a liability. Help. The Hebrew word there is the word help. It is the word idzah. Idzah in Hebrew. Idzah. Interestingly enough, it's the same word that's used in Psalm 121, when David said, I will lift up my eyes to his, what cometh my help, Itzah. The same Hebrew word that David uses in the psalm, the same word is used here, help. It implies that this man won't make it to his destiny. As the man needs God in Psalm 21 to go from the starting point to the destiny, Itzah, same word here, that this man won't fulfill his destiny unless he got this help in his life. With all the wonderful stuff he got, he won't get to where he needs to be. I'm going to send him help, not a hindrance. Not somebody who's going to hurt him. I'm going to send him helps, not hips. Now, now, if my helps just got some hips, Somebody talk to me here. And you like hips, then anyway you bless me. I, I wish y'all take the brakes off me. God, if it's 36, 24, 42, anyway you bless me. My hands are lifted. I put my hands in your... I mean, however you want to bless me, if that's what you choose to do. But the problem is, hips don't raise smart children. Y'all ain't fish. Y'all ain't fish. Help can't help with algebra homework. Y'all ain't helping me preach here. You can't call Georgia Power at the end of the month and say, you know, I ain't got no money, but I sure got some hips in this bed because they don't care about what happened. You need more than hips on the 15th and 30th. You need somebody. I wish I had somebody who would talk to me around here. Fellas, too many of us mess up and lose our help chasing after hips. You can have a help at the crib and lose all the help. Oh, she done got older now. Now they're flexible. You used to the help. She, you know, you don't conquer her now. Now it's exciting no more. I wish somebody talked to me here. I, I, I got to preach this because it's, 
it's Black Marriage Sunday. I got to preach this. And how many of us guys have messed up? Not because we didn't have hips, but because we didn't have help. And so what I want to say, single man, are you qualified? Single lady, are you ready to be married? The question is, are you ready to be helped? If all your credit cards maxed out, who you going to help? Hmm? You got $1,200 in Peruvian hair and 10 cents worth of brain. Who you going to help? Maybe God ain't hook you up yet because you ain't ready and qualified, met the conditions. Because you can't help yourself. And society has warped a lot of us ladies, you know what I mean? You know, is that I'm ready for a man, a knight in a shining armor to save me. What have you done for me lately? No, but you got to have it together yourself. Why? Because you ain't looking about to save you because what you need is a spouse, not a savior. Jesus is your savior. Come on, are there any ladies who don't need a savior? Jesus qualifies for that. Now, you just need some companionship, somebody to be your life with. But if he don't come, you already saved. Jesus took care of that on Calvary. It would be nice to have. You ain't saving me, dog. No, I can take myself to dinner before you came. My God, this fingernail polish, you didn't pay for that. I can do what I need to do for myself. I want to join with you. I don't need, I don't need deliverance. <laughs> Having to do don't mean I need to be delivered. Come on, help me here, somebody. So work on yourself. Getting your credit up. Finish some of the educational goals. Following your vision. He ain't come yet. Just stop sitting back doing nothing. Enjoy life. Go to the football game for yourself. Come on, help me here, somebody. My God, take up trade, learn to paint. Go to the football game. Be fine. Go to where the, go to where the guys who need help at. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Pass on nothing about football. Act like you do. Buy your Julio Jones jersey. Tie it around real tight with some leggings and act like you're a football fan. Go and act like you can be help to somebody. Are y'all with me? Now, those were the characteristics that should be evident. And let's notice this secondly. Let me stop on this one. The caution that must be exercised. Okay? So, we talked about the characteristics, but let me give you a caution. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you a warning. Won't you watch the text now? I want, I want to make this come alive so we can see it. Verse 18, God says, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make, I will make. I will make. They ain't going to do it themselves. I'm going to do it. It's okay. You want to go to singles.com? But, okay, I, but I will make. So all these things you're doing, all these magazines you're doing, make sure you talk to me. That's what, y'all hear what the brother said up here? Before I met you, I was, I was talking to God about you. That thing, that, I said, that's, a, that's an OG move there, boy. I, just, I wrote that one down. That thing... That was bad, boy. I said, man, I hate him. Why? Well, I didn't think of that one. I didn't, I didn't, before I met you, I was praying. I was talking to God about you before I met you, boy. And she was like, <laughs> he just break. I said, my God, somebody coming. My God, he done messed up. She finna fall out on the stage. Wasn't that an OG line, boy? My God, y'all give him a hand. That was old. That was straight OG. Boy, you a bad boy. I was praying for you. I'm, let me talk to the God who's going to make you. We do everything else except talk to God. So verse 19, check it out. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm almost finished. Verse 19, now here's where it gets tricky. This is why you got to be cautious. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. Wait a minute. Verse 18. Watch 18. And the Lord God said, it's not good to be alone. I will make a help me for him. God said, I'm going to make you some help. Verse 19, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. So God said, I'm going to make him some help. And then the next thing God does is make beast. You just said I was ready. 
You just said you're going to make me help in verse 18. So if you're going to make me help in verse 18, why are you making beast? Verse 19. Y'all see that? Y'all see it? I didn't, make, I didn't write it. Look, God, God formed the beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and then he brought them unto Adam to see what he would. Now here's why I want it, it messed me up. Verse 18. The Lord God said, I will make and help me for him. That's what God said. Verse 19, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bow there, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Here's my problem. Don't you tell me you're going to give me some help in verse 18. And then let me meet some beasts in verse 19. Because how would I know if this is my help? Let me talk to this side. Y'all sleep on this side. Let me talk to this side. How many of y'all know that when you get ready and when you're ready and you're mature, you got to be careful? Because the first thing that come along once you're ready may not be your blessing. It might be a beast. Okay, thirdly, thirdly, are y'all with me? Characteristics, caution, three, the condition that must be experienced. Caution, exercise, condition. You got to go through something. Here's what God does. He says, okay, Adam, you thought you were ready, but you were, re you were ready externally. Verses 7 through 17 were all, in a real sense, externalities. Now I got to do some internal work on you. <sighs> what do you mean, do it? Verse number 21. Once, once Adam used the caution, God calls a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. You know part of y'all, some, some of our problem in marriage and single life? You too woke. God says, Adam, I want you to go to sleep. Because if you stay woke, then you will think that you got the spouse because you were awake. So let me put you to sleep so when the spouse comes, you can't take no credit for it. Too many, you're too busy trying to figure out when he coming, where he coming. You're too busy trying to make things happen. Go to sleep here. It's metaphorical here in a real sense. Be at peace. Adam, if you can't have peace in your singleness, you'll never have serenity in a relationship. Adam, if you ain't good with sleeping alone, you'll never, appreci you'll never be able to appreciate sleeping with a partner. Go to sleep. Then while you sleep, the next thing God does, he performs surgery. Can the church say surgery? God cut Adam. He cut him. He cut him. Then God reached inside of Adam and took a rib out of Adam's side. Okay, Adam, you want your spouse. She coming. But before she comes, I'm going to put you to sleep. I'm going to perform surgery. There's something in you that I need to get out of you before she comes. Sometimes what God is doing in us is taking stuff out of us. Uh -huh. Maybe he's taking some past hurts out of you. Because what happens is the past hurt has become a hard rib. And the heart rib now has covered your heart. What if God reached in you, took some out of you, and made your spouse out of the same thing he got out of you? I'm trying to make this thing live. Let say it again. What if God reached in you, took something out of you, and then made your spouse out of the thing he took from you, and then brought that thing back to you? 
could you receive God bringing you a spouse that was made out of something that came out of you? Let me come this way. Could you marry you? My friends, I hope that message changed your life. I hope it blessed you. I want you to know that God's going to do great things in your life, and this word is not going to return void. If you were blessed by this message, why don't you call, correspond with us right now? Why don't you order the message for a friend? Consider becoming a partner with us. I need your help. Can't do it by myself. We need your help to help us to carry the word of God into every part of this world. Also, why don't you consider sowing a seed into our ministry? If you're blessed by our ministry, let me hear from you. Pick up that phone right now and just sow a seed of love. Can't do it without you. I need your help. Friends, I gotta leave you now, but always remember this. If you will be good to God, then God will be good to you. You've been watching Living Hope. See you next time. Be transformed by Dr. Dewey's message. Before somebody really can be involved in a relationship, they need to have the breath of God in them, which signifies empowerment, or, or basically symbolizes a relationship with God. That anybody who wants to love somebody else, you really can't love somebody else, you really can't even love yourself until you understand the God that's in you. So God breathes into this man who's called Adam or Adam, the breath. And once he's been breathed on, then he becomes a living soul. Order your own copy of this message today on CD or DVD when you visit our website or call 877-894-HOPE. Download the new E. Dewey Smith Ministries app today in the iTunes Store or Google Play. Connect with us wherever you go on your phone, iPod Touch, or iPad. We have lots of great content to empower you. You can stream live and connect with us all within the app. Download today. Meet Dr. E. Dewey Smith in any of these great locations. Sunday, July 2nd at Liberty Hall Cathedral of Praise in Brooklyn, New York. Monday, August 21st at Christian Methodist Episcopal Church 2017 Unity Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. Friday, September 8th at TB Stewart Ministries Incorporated in Houston, Texas. For more information on any of these great events, call 877-894-HOPE. The challenge is you and I have to grow to become what we desire. And if you and I are wanting something that we ain't given, then we ain't ready. It's funny how we want loyalty, but don't want to be loyal. How we want commitment, but not committed. How we want somebody who's discreet, but you run your mouth. Oh, I don't made I don't made half the church mad this morning. I can tell I'm about myself. Mm -hmm.